Yo, what's going on, guys? Then my first simple snippets, and welcome back to another video tutorial under operating systems, especially the memory management part. And in this video tutorial, we are going to be understanding the working of first in first out page replacement algorithm, and we are also going to solve two numericals based on this algorithm. So in the previous couple of videos, we've seen what is paging, what is page faults, and why we need page replacement algorithms. So if you have missed those videos, or if you don't know what they are, you can check those videos in this playlist. And I'm directly gonna jump into the numericals without wasting a lot of time in the theory. So I'm assuming you already know what is page replacement, what is paging, what are page faults, and so on. So with that being said, let's start off with the first page replacement algorithm that is first in first out. So as the name suggests, this is the simplest page replacement algorithm. And in this algorithm, the operating system keeps a track of all pages in the memory in a queue, and the oldest page is in the front of the queue. So whenever a page needs to be replaced, the page in the front of the queue is selected for removal. So it is that simple. If you just read this point again, the entire working can be imagined. But let's solve a numerical because that is the best way to understand this first in first out page replacement algorithm. So let's consider this example. So consider a page reference string one three zero three five six and three page slots. Calculate the number of page faults. So we have to find out number of page faults. We've been given a reference string, and we've also been given the number of page slots that are available. So this reference string is basically the page name that the CPU wants to execute. Okay. So the CPU wants to execute page number one first, page number three second, page number zero third, and so on and so forth. So for simplicity purpose, we are assuming that there is only one process. Let's say process A, and it is being divided into these number of pages so page 1 page 3 page 0 so these are just names and the cpu wants to execute those pages in this order so this is what the reference string is and the three page slots tells us that in the main memory we have only three page slots free okay so whatever replacement algorithm we have to apply we have to apply in these three frames so that is what is depicted in this diagram so with that being said let's start off with first in first out page replacement algorithm And you'll understand the entire working as we move through this numerical. So we have this reference string one three zero three five six. So I'm just gonna write it on each of this iteration. So each of this vertical column re represents one iteration. So I'm just gonna write one three zero three five and six over here. So what do we have to calculate? We have to calculate number of page faults. So for the first iteration, page one is requested. So you can see in the memory in all these three frames, we do not have page one. So this means that a page fault has happened, right? So I'm just gonna write x over here, or you can also denote page fault number. So this is first page fault because it is not there in the physical memory, right? Which means that this page one has to be loaded over here. So I'm just gonna write one over here. Let's move ahead. For the second iteration, CPU wants page three. Now we already have page one over here, right? In frame number one. So this is one, but three is not there. So again, a page fault is generated and Page number three is being loaded from the virtual memory into the main memory, so I'm just gonna write three over here. Moving on to the third iteration, we already have one and three in the memory. Now CPU is wanting page zero. You can see that there is no page zero in the frames, so I'm just gonna write zero over here. And this is our third page fault. This was our second page fault over here. And now for the next iteration, that is for the fourth iteration, you can see that all the frames are filled with Page number one, page number three, and page number zero. But CPU is wanting page three again. So page three is already there in these frames, right? It is there in frame number two, which means that the page table for this process will already have an entry that page three is there in the main memory, which means that page fault will not be generated. So over here, page fault is not generated, and I'm just going to write one, three, and zero as it is because three is already there in the memory. So I hope you are getting up until now. So let's move ahead. Now the CPU is wanting page five. So you can see that page five is not there in these three memory slots. So we have to replace or we have to swap out one of the page, right? So this is where the first in first out algorithm comes into picture. And as the name suggests, we have to replace the page that came in first. Now, if you see from the timeline, that is, if you see from the reference string order, page number one was the very first that was brought into the frames, and it is still there, right? You can see it is still there in all these frames. So that is the reason why we have to replace this one. With this page five, so I'm gonna write five over here, and the remaining three and zero are gonna be as it is. And again, this is a page fault scenario, right? Because page five was not there 
it has to be swapped in in the place of one. So again, I'm just going to mark X and this is fourth page fault. And for the last iteration, page six is requested by the CPU. Six is not there in the physical memory. You can see in it is not there in any of these frames. So again, a page fault is generated. So this is fifth page fault and some page has to be swapped out. So again, if you go back in this timeline or the order in which the reference string is, you can see that three came in after one. So we've already swapped one over here in this stage. So the next page which came in right after one is three, right? So this three is going to be swapped out over here and I'm going to write six at the place of three and the rest are going to be the same. So five and zero are going to be the same because three is first in line after one, right? So that is why it is swapped out and six takes its place. So this is the entire timeline chart. You can see what is happening in the memory and the end result is the number of page faults, which you can calculate over here. So we have one, two, three in this step page fault did not happen. We have page fault over here, fourth one and fifth one. So number of page faults over here is five. So this is the final answer. So this was a very basic numerical of first in first out, but I hope you have understood the overall working of how FIFO works. And now let's see a little complex, rather lengthy numerical, not complex, but a little lengthy. And there are few more details that we are supposed to be finding out in that question. Okay. So in this question, we have a reference string starting from A, B, C, D, and we have alphabets. So instead of numbers, we have alphabets. So basically these are page names, right? So they can be anything and to confuse you, they can give you symbols, numbers, alphabets, and so on. So it's basically one and the same thing. So we have some alphabets. And the size of frame is four. So we have four frames this time and not three. So the things that we are supposed to calculate is number of page faults, page fault probability and page fault percentage. So three things are supposed to be found out one, two and three. But first we have to solve this numerical similar to what we did in question number one, just that we have four page slots or four frames in the memory this time. And we have more number of reference string alphabets. So I'm just first going to write down these alphabets over here. So I'm going to say A, B. C, D and so on and so forth. Okay. So I've written down the page names in the reference string order. Now let's start off with step number one. So for step number one, page A is not there in any of the frames. So a page fault is generated. I'm going to mark X over here. I'm going to load A in the frame F1. Moving on to step number two. We have A in the memory, but we do not have B in the memory. So I'm going to load B in the memory. And this is a page fault because it is not there in the memory. Similarly for C and D also. So your A and B is going to be there. C is not going to be there. So this is a page fault over your A, B, C is there. D is not there. I'm going to load D and this is a page fault. So initial four steps, we have page faults because A, B, C, D were not there in the memory only, which means that page fault is happening. So for step number five, you can see that page C is already there over here. So page fault is not going to happen. So I'm just going to write A, B, C, D as it is again. Similarly for A and D, that is step number six and seven, same case, right? So A, B, C, D again here, A, B, C, D. So no page fault here and here. Similarly for this step that is requesting B. So B is already there in memory. So again, no page fault writing A, B, C, D as it is. But now at this step, the CPU is wanting page E. Up until now, we never had page E in the memory. We have only A, B, C, D. So one of the page has to be swapped. Now, according to FIFO, the first page that came in has to be swapped. And if you see, if you go back in the timeline, you can see A came in first and it is still there throughout all these steps, which means that A has to be swapped out, right? So I'm going to write E at the place of A that is in frame one and rest of the things are going to be as it is. So B, C, D are going to be as it is. And this is a page fault situation, right? Because we had to perform swapping, which means E was not there in the memory. So it had to be brought in, in the place of a. So this is a page fault situation. I'm just going to mark X. Let's move to the next step. We want B over here. B is already there in the memory. So I'm just going to write everything as it is E B C D. This is not a page fault. Moving on to the next step. We want a in the memory, but a now is not there in the memory because we swapped E instead of a, right? So a has to be brought in the memory, but we have to swap a page because all the frames are full. So after a, you can see that we had loaded B over here. And B is still there throughout all these steps. So B has to be swapped out for the next iteration and A is going to be loaded in place of B and rest things are going to be as it is. So E, C, D is going to be as it is. And this is a page fault scenario. Now moving ahead for the next step, B is requested. 
but in the previous step we just replaced b right so we have to again bring back b from the virtual memory into our physical memory so which page should we replace so according to fifo after a and after b c was brought into the frames right you can see in the timeline that is in this order so c is still there you can see c is there throughout all these steps so now we have to replace c and instead of c we have to add b and rest of them are going to be as it is so e is going to be as it is a is going to be as it is and d is going to be as it is and this is again a page fault scenario moving on to the second last step cpu wants c but we just replaced c in the previous step so c has to be again brought back in the memory and if you observe in this entire timeline d was brought last and it is still there so it came in first right compared to others so we have to swap out d now so instead of d we are going to add c over here it's a page fault and rest of the things are going to be as it is so i hope you are understanding why we are replacing page number b c and d in all these steps because they were the first which came in and that is why they are going to be the first which are going to go out because according to fifo algorithm the oldest page has to be replaced right okay so now we are on the last step and now we want d but d is not there in this four frames so again a page fault is generated and now we have to swap one page out of these four pages so which one should we swap so if you observe in this step c came in in this step b came in in this step a came in and in this step b came in so we cannot replace c we cannot replace b we cannot replace a and we cannot re replace b again which means that this e is the oldest page compared to a b and c so a b and c came in recently but e is the oldest page which means that it is first compared to a b c so we have to replace e now and instead of e we have to add d and the rest of them are going to be as it is so a b and c are going to be as it is and this is a page fault situation so this is the entire numerical and we still have to calculate these three values but i hope you've understood how to go about this reference string and memory allocation and swapping of pages using first in first out page replacement algorithm now let's calculate these three values so the number of page faults you can easily calculate so this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 this is 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 so number of page faults is 9 now the page fault probability is given by number of page faults that is 9 divided by the total number of memory accesses which is 14 in this case so if you just count the alphabets in this reference string so we have 1 2 3 4 and so on and so forth it is 14 so 9 by 14 is going to give you 0.642 okay so this is the page fault probability which means that the probability of a page fault happening in this system in with this reference string and with this first in first out algorithm is 0.64 so lastly the page fault percentage is number of page faults which is 9 divided by the total number of memory accesses which is 14 and into 100 so this is basic percentage formula in fact if you just multiply 0.64 to into 100 you'll get 64.2% so this is the final answer okay So yeah this was the first in first out page replacement algorithm and we saw the theory what is first in first out and we also solved two different numericals first one was pretty easy wherein we understood how fifo works and second one was a bit lengthy but definitely not difficult and we had to find three different values in this case so i hope you have understood the entire numerical and that's it for this video guys i hope you like this video if you liked it please give it a thumbs up share it with your friends comment and let me know how this video was If you haven't yet subscribed on this channel make sure you subscribe so that you get notified whenever i upload a new video so thanks for watching guys i'll see you guys in the next video peace